Okay, we're back again. We're going to be focusing on immigration reform. I'm skipping over the Veterans Administration and the Second Amendment rights, basically because what he says about the VA is essentially true, but he doesn't understand that either, and his proposals are vague. His basic idea is high, you know, the veterans aren't getting the benefits they should have, and I will fix that. Well, I don't believe that he'll fix that, but yes, they do need to be fixed. Okay? Very much so. Our veterans are not properly paid. They're paid too little, and the VA benefits that they get are really the reason why a whole lot of them sign up. And there's a whole lot. Of, there's just way too much red tape. I'm not going to say more about that because, you know, it's a pretty straightforward position, but he doesn't offer any specifics about how to fix it. Second Amendment rights, he's pro being able to, to carry a gun. I agree with that. I would carry him one step for, further, and I would I would insist that every citizen in the United States um, be given training to use a gun. Okay, it doesn't mean you have to purchase one, but you get trained in using one. In other words, they have driver's ed courses in high school. They should have gun ed courses too, and then you get a license to use a gun. Have everybody get a license to use one, period. And then you do not need, because it's part of the background check can be done as part of the license. And it gets renewed, just like a driver's license does. Then you don't need to register the guns. So that way the people who actually own the guns remains unknown. It's really important. The freedom of society depends on not knowing whether or not the house you enter has a gun owner in it. So what's wrong is gun registration. Just, honey, just license everybody and teach them how to shoot a gun. Because that way they can actually defend themselves properly. And, you know, just like driver's license, you have to go back and renew. Have them all renew. So not everybody knows how to shoot a gun. So not any burglar who wants to enter my house, he doesn't know. But he, he, except for this law, I might be really good at shooting him. He doesn't know if I have a gun. He can't find out either. Because, you know, we all know each other's addresses. It's not too hard to figure out the name from the address and then go figure out if you're a gun owner. That's stupid. Don't give the criminal an additional, you know, backing an additional way that he can check up on you. Honey, just license everybody to use a gun. That's the way we did it in America prior to turning PC. The fathers taught their children. Everybody carried a gun, and everybody knew how to shoot one when you were five or six or seven. I remember that was happening with my own dad. And I was, I want to say, seven years old. He took me out and had me shoot at bottles. Now, remember the kick of the gun. Okay, I don't remember what kind of gun it was. I want to say it was 45, but I kind of doubt that. Might have been. I had to aim at the bottles. I had to shoot at the bottles. That's what Americans did, is the fathers taught the kids how to shoot. It didn't matter if you were male or female, because you never knew where the criminal or the bandit or the animal was going to come into your house, and so everybody had to learn how to shoot. Let's reinstate that. Only we can make it a national license. So everybody's licensed to carry. Whether you actually buy a gun or not, well, that's a secret. And you can do your background checks then on everybody. Duh, you want to get rid of the Muslims who are actually terrorists? This would be the way to do it. Well, you don't see any of that in his proposal, but that's mine. But at least he's pro-gun ownership and he's pro-gun carrying. In Texas here, we just passed a new law where you can carry your gun openly. I might actually go out and get one now because of that. You know, criminals aren't too likely to attack if they can see you can attack them. That's the point. That was true in the Wild West. That was true 100 years ago, 200 years ago, and that's true now. So that's a position of his that's good. Okay, but now we're on immigration reform, and this guy couldn't be dumber. His China policy will get us into World War III. His tax policy does absolutely nothing. 
and this. This is like the TVA. Do you remember that? Texas, T Tennessee Valley Authority. I want to say it was Roosevelt. Not really sure it was Roosevelt and which Roosevelt. But one of them decided, oh, it must have been, it must have been Franklin. We were in the middle of a depression, and Keynesian economics was, you know, all the rage. I want to say that was when, because Keynes, I think, came out at the beginning of the 20th century. And so the idea was, well, if the government spends, it'll stimulate the economy. That's true and helpful in certain limited circumstances, but we didn't care. So Roosevelt comes up with, well, let's just build all this stuff and have the federal government pay for it. Well, really what happened was the federal government did a bunch of IOUs. That's how we started getting in debt. FDR was the first, maybe not the first, but he might have been the first president to start getting us in debt. He's the guy who created Social Security, too. Okay? So his idea was to have a federal building project. Now, I think it was the Tennessee Valley Dam or something. Anyway, that's what this guy is about, building. This is a Democrat in disguise, because he's certainly clueless like a Democrat. Democrats are famously clueless on foreign policy. They're famously clueless on economics. Donald Trump has proven to be famously clueless on both, okay, and or lying, because with the tax policy, it's either he's stupid or lying. Can't say either one, which probably lying if I say smart, okay? When politicians talk about immigration reform, they mean amnesty, cheap labor, and open borders. That Schumer rule the immigration bill was nothing more than a giveaway to the corporate patrons who run both parties. First of all, he's got his own immigrants that he employs and has been doing that for decades. You can't build a hotel without immigrant labor. And that's the point. This is the same argument that hit Rome from the very beginning. Your native people are now the patricians or now the original people, whether you call them white or higher class or you call them whatever you want. This has always been America's problem, too. The immigrants coming in will be cheaper labor. If you want to get something done and make a profit, even if it's only so that you can keep on living, you know, because you got to make a profit even to survive. You know, when you go to work in the morning and you come home at night and you collect your paycheck at the end of the week, you better have that paycheck be bigger than the cost of what it cost you to live and to clothe yourself and to drive and to go there. Because if you don't make a profit on it, then you can't survive. What if you get sick? Who's going to pay your wages then? Who's going to pay your expenses then if you can't work? So you have to make a profit. Same thing is true for business. It's no different. Okay, well, if the people are too snotty or too high paid, and you have to go out to the highways and byways and find the immigrants, that's how America grew. It's not immigrant labor. Your first wave of immigrants come over, and there were people already here from the earlier settlers and blah, 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 and they were all full of themselves now and, you know, rich. Not all of them rich, but a lot of them. And the immigrants were cheaper than the lower end of us, and so they got hired. That has always been true in the entire history of the United States. See, this guy has no sense of history. It's a killer. Wait a minute, I'll come back. Okay, back. It's a killer because he doesn't understand, and he's he's from like the quintessential melting pot city. New York City was a melting pot. How can this guy not understand that America was built on immigration labor? Everything about us is built that way. Our lab, our our railroads, you know, under Cornelius Vanderbilt, were built by a lot of, what do you want to call it, Chinese and Mexican immigrant labor. 
especially Chinese. A whole lot of stories about that, how badly the Chinese were treated. Okay, every wave of immigrants coming into the Statue of Liberty, because that's where they had to, you know, check in, was Ellis Island. It was really something to go there. I, I had the privilege of being able to go there. And, and it, it, just to feel the history of the place. Okay? They mean amnesty, cheap labor, and open borders. Yeah. That is what they mean. And he's, he's acting like, well, I don't like that. Honey, that's 200 years of America's history. How can you not like it? All right? Nothing more than a giveaway, the corporate pay. No, it isn't. Okay? Do you know who hires immigrant labor? Small employers. The fruit packer. The guy who um, runs a lawn service. The restaurant owner. I'm living in Humble, Texas, which is on the southern border. I mean, right, you know, right, like, Oh, maybe 60 miles from the sea. All right, it's right near um, Intercontinental Air Airport. I'm in a city of maybe I don't know 20,000. I'm not sure how big Humble is. It's north of Houston. I, I would probably say that one third of the population are immigrant labor, whether they're illegal immigrants or legal immigrants. I don't know. But I mean, you know, and that was true when I was born in California, too. I mean, Spanish and English are sort of like, you know, two sides of a coin for me. Because you grow up and you hear it all the time. All right? So why is he, you know, immigration, cheap labor and open borders? Yeah. If they're immigrants, then they're going to run and be cheaper than the citizen will. That's not the fault of the immigrant. I hope you understand that. If the immigrant is willing to work for at Walmart, there's a minimum wage in the United States, but let's pretend, I don't really remember what it is anymore. Let's pretend it's $7 an hour. If it were legal for Walmart to hire somebody at less than $7 an hour who is an immigrant, why shouldn't they do that? That means that Walmart's prices will be lower. So I, who am making, who am a citizen, going to Walmart buying their products, well then my products are lower. My products prices are lower. But if Walmart was only allowed to pay eight dollars an hour, let's say, and never to hire immigrants, only U.S. citizens, well then wouldn't it have to charge higher prices to everybody? See, this is, the, this is the problem. A lawnmower service, a lawn, you know, the guys that do your landscaping. Chances are real good that they hire a lot of Spanish labor, a lot of Mexican labor. Because a lot of Mexicans don't learn English. That's why we learned Spanish when I was growing up in California. It's down here in Texas, everybody's pretty much bilingual. Not, not fluent necessarily, but we can understand Spanish when we hear it. And we can reply enough that they understand us. The same thing was true in Jerusalem. They spoke three languages in Jerusalem. Okay, Greek and Latin, and he, well, Aramaic, really. Hebrew was also spoken, but it was only one in connection with Bible. Okay? When you have a cosmopolitan place, honey, that's the way it works. Okay, so here's the problem. He's basically saying the immigrants are bad because there's amnesty, cheap labor, and open borders. And he's implying here that corporate patrons running both parties. It isn't the big corporations who benefit the most from immigrant labor. It's the small one. It's the mom and pop who the guy who's living in a ranch house that maybe costs a hundred grand and instead of being somebody's employee, he's trying to run a lawn service and so he might have 50 or 100 clients and the only way he can have that many clients is if he hires immigrant labor because they're willing to work for a lot lower. He can't hire a U.S. citizen to work at those rates and therefore create a business. 
That's why people don't do anything about immigration for 40, 50, 100, 200 years we've had the problem that, that Donald Trump is talking about. It's not recent. We've had Mexicans crossing the border. We've had Canadians crossing the border. We've had everybody crossing the border since we became a country. And we were the first ones to leave our countries to come here. So Trump doesn't even understand. He, and of course, his own. He, he couldn't have any of his hotels built without immigrant labor. It won't happen. The construction industry is at least got to be one third immigrant, mostly Spanish labor. Probably half, but I'm guessing it's got to be at least one third. And immigrant labor is how the economy of the southern half of the United States runs, period. I can't speak for the northern half that much, except that the Spanish population in Chicago is really high. Okay, so this guy, he doesn't understand. See, he doesn't understand taxes, he doesn't understand China, and he doesn't understand immigration. And its role in keeping costs down for the rest of us. Okay, so let's go on with his stupidity, because it gets worse. Real immigration reform puts the needs of working people first, not wealthy, globe-trotting donors. What? Does he have any idea what he's talking about? It isn't the big corporations who employ most of the immigrant labor. It's the little ones. Your big corporation is covered by so many regulations at the federal level, it can't really afford to employ immigrants. The closest it can do is like, you know, with Microsoft and some of the others, is that they have to go hat in hand to Congress and ask for visas for H-1B and H-2B, which I'm against, by the way, because we already have enough people in this country who are qualified to do those jobs and actually do them better. But when it comes to, you know, the so-called Mexican immigration, which is where he's going to focus his attention, he's dead wrong about wealthy globe-trotting donors. This is, this is just bullshit language, okay? Because they don't employ immigrants. They don't. I mean, it's just... Your canneries employ immigrant. See, immigrant labor means low physical labor. So if you're working in agriculture, you know, like maybe dole pineapple, of course that's not the right thing, but dole and some of its products where it's got lots of huge farms will have immigrant labor on those farms, those kinds of companies. But you can't call them globetrotting donors. You would be paying more for at the grocery store if they didn't have immigrant labor picking the fruit, picking the cherries, picking the whatever it is that they put into their cans. All right, period. See, he's, he's talking like this is all Democrat talk. This is conservative Democrat talk. This is your redneck Democrat who says that I, I don't have my job because some black, some brown person took my job. And never mind that I wouldn't be picking tomatoes at that price like he is. It's his fault. He's got a job and I don't. Yeah, and if you were willing to work at the same rate and for the same number of hours as he is, then you would have a job. See, that's the part of the story that Trump isn't telling you. So all the redneck guys who really, you know, it's like a form of xenophobia. They're not, they're not thinking. He's just catering to this. And the worst part about it is, is that he himself is guilty of what he's accusing. If you're going to say what he, this is bad and evil and wrong, then he's guilty because you can't build hotels. He made his money on the backs of immigrant labor, too. Everybody does. 
It's a fact of life in the United States for at least the last 100 years, really the last 200 years. You know, you had your waves of immigrants. First you had the whites, and now it's the brown people. We had different kinds of whites. We had Italians coming in as immigrants. And they started at the bottom. We had Greeks coming in as immigrants. They started at the bottom. We had, well, of course, the English were here first. I mean, come on. And then, of course, what about all that slave labor we imported? Oh, bloody hell. A nation without borders is not a nation. There must be a war. Now, this is the quintessential stupidity of Donald Trump. The number, the easiest way to know you shouldn't vote for him. Right there, highlighted in blue. Let's, let's to show you why, let's do United States map. There you go. Now, remember what he said? There must be a wall across the southern border. What's the southern border? Well, it depends on how you want to define it. Do you define it starting, see where my hand is on this map right up here? Do you want to define it as, see, because this is, this is Ojai and, you know, Baja and all that part of Mexico. Really dirty, by the way, okay, because I used to live right in here. Do you want to... Build the wall all around here. Okay. Is that the wall he wants to build? No, honey, there already is a bunch of checkpoints all along here. This, you can't even cross this line here. There's a bunch of custom stations that you have to. Okay, going back and forth. And then the same thing is true in all these places. Okay, building a wall is not going to prevent whatever, what do you want to call it? Immigration illegally is occurring in there now. And why would you build a wall? Look at that distance. Do you know what, how much money would be spent Oh, it's got to be, what, 20, 30 billion dollars right here? Okay? Got to be that much. Because how high do you build it? What do you build it of? How do you keep it? How do you maintain it? So when I'm saying 20, 30 billion dollars, I'm saying, you know, including the cost of maintenance. It might be much higher than that. Okay, so for the same 20 or 30 billion dollars, couldn't you come up with a better plan than building a wall that is what? Like the Maginot Line? Oh, that really helped France defend itself from Germany. Not. The Maginot Line, just go look it up. M-A-G-I-N-O-T. Or, or how about the Great Wall of China? Yeah, that worked so long as we didn't have air cover. And what about trains with the railroads? We got lots of trains coming in from Mexico, bringing freight. And the immigrants right on the trains, what are you going to do? Stop them every two and a half seconds? You can't build a wall and not let the trains through. I mean, you know, what did this guy just, I think he's on crack. I really do. A nation without borders is not, see, this is a border. See, United States. Be below that purple, that's Mexico. We already have borders. A nation without borders is not, see, we have this whole thing. Up here, that's a border, and this whole thing down there, that's a border. A nation without borders is not a nation. We have borders. The problem is not that we have borders, and we don't need a wall, which can't really work, to protect the borders, which is going to cost us 20 or 30 billion dollars, let's say. Why don't we take that same 20 or 30 billion and do something better with it? A nation without laws is not a nation. So? 
What was this? See, this is just all chutzpah. He's saying things that don't solve anything. He's just grandstanding. A nation that does not serve its own citizens is not a nation. Yeah, duh, that's of course true. But building a wall is not going to accomplish this, which we already have laws. And we already have immigration plan that improves jobs. It's just not good enough. See, he's pretending like there's, he's pretending that this would actually be a, a valuable solution, which it's not. And he's pretending that, that nothing has been done about this. A lot has been done about this. The worst part is he does not appreciate the cause of the problem. You cannot solve a disease until you know the cause of the disease. If you have a cold, is there a cure? No, there isn't. Okay, well then you know what not to do. This is the sickness of Donald Trump. He's trying to treat symptoms. He's not going after the cause. And he doesn't therefore know that the cause is really pretty plain to anybody else. America's a richer country than the countries we're attached to. People see America and they want to come here because they want a better life. That's the cause of the disease of immigration, illegal or legal. That's why people come here. That's why we came here. The whole start of America is because, oh, this is better land than the land we're living in. Let's leave. And you know what? We're not the only people in history 400 years ago that got that idea. Other people now look at us and want what we got. They got two ways to deal with that problem. They can either try to develop it in their own land or they can leave and come here. A lot of them don't try to develop it in their own land or are too jealous of us having it here and they want to destroy what we have here so they want to come here and destroy what we got. Or they want to come here and help have what we got but they want to work for it. See, that's the cause of the disease which Donald Trump should know better. He was born in Queens for crying out loud. That's immigrant heaven. So how come he doesn't understand? Okay, how come he doesn't understand? The cause of the disease is that America exists and it's better. Now, how do you cure the cause? Well, America could die. Don't think that's a good solution. Well, we can try to make ourselves worse as a nation until we're equal to the badness of the other nations so they won't want to come here anymore. That doesn't sound like a good solution. So then, like the cold, the common cold, there is no cure. All you can do is manage the symptoms. And yeah, that's what his brooch wants to do. Laws passed in accordance with the constitutional system must be enforced. But we're already doing that. We're just not doing it well enough. So his, his words here are superfluous. A nation that does not serve its own citizens is not a nation. Any immigration plan must improve jobs, wages, and security for all, Amer all Americans. Why? Why does an immigration plan have to do that? Improving the jobs, wages, and security for all Americans is a separate task from an immigration plan that deals with the unavoidable disease of people coming here unbidden. It is not the responsibility of an immigration plan to improve the jobs, wages, and security for all Americans. Not an immigration plan. Other, the immigration plan is to stop people from coming in or um, permit them to come in for whatever reasons work. But we have never in this country wanted to do that.
This is real important. This is the other thing Trump doesn't understand. This is why he cannot be elected president. He doesn't understand this problem of immigration that he's talking about was a problem 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, ever since the Great Compromise of 1850. That was basically when America started to really become something. And then, of course, we had our own Civil War, and after that, by the turn of the century, you know, the turn of the, the 1900s. That was when, you know, you had J. Pierpont Morgan, and you had, um, whatchamacallit, Andrew Carnegie, you had Henry Ford, you had Henry Rockefeller, you had still, I, I forget when he died, though, he might have died just before then, Cornelius Vanderbilt, at least William Vanderbilt, all those titans, their time. That was when immigration started to really peak. Because that's when America started to coalesce. And it all really came together very well because we needed the immigrant labor at the very time that they were starting to come in. And because of the Great Compromise, we suddenly had a whole nation that we had to populate and connect. It's really an amazing story about how America finally came together in the 1800s. Latter part of the 1800s, especially you know, just after the Civil War. Okay? Is Donald Trump so totally clueless about that history that he doesn't understand? Immigration plan isn't going to solve the jobs and the security and the wages for all Americans. That's not his job. You see the point? So he's, he's saying this is supposed to do this. No. If he doesn't understand that this is totally apart from this, then he, he shouldn't even run for dog catcher. Now, his solutions are even worse. Like I said, this is t totally ridiculous. There must be a wall across the southern border. And now, oh God, can you be dumber? Make Mexico pay for the wall. Okay. Now, this can't be too hard to understand, right? Economics 101. The Mexicans are coming over here because they can't get jobs in Mexico. Or they can't get them at a good enough wage in Mexico. So that means Mexico doesn't have the money to create the industries, to create the jobs, to hire the people. So how's Mexico going to pay for the wall? And if Mexico pays for the wall, what's going to happen? More and more and more and more Mexicans will be put out of work. Put out of work in order to give us the money to pay for the wall. So that means more Mexicans, while the wall is being built, of course, are going to stream over here. Because then the Mexican economy is getting even worse than it already is now. So could you be dumber than to have this proposal? No. Okay? So you read this all you want. Now, this... It's just as dumb as it gets. It gets worse and worse and worse. Triple the number of officers. Nationwide e verify. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, some of these ideas he's copied from others. Okay, mandatory return. Of, he has no idea of the logistics involved in these things. Okay, none. Zero. Zero. But number one, to even propose this means that Donald Trump is the last person you should elect because he has no sense. He's wrong on China. He's pretty good on Second Amendment rights. He's so-so in Veterans Administration because he's vague. Tax reform, he just copied from them, from other candidates in immigration reform, which is truly his own thinking and truly unique because nobody else has ever proposed this before because nobody's that dumb. 
So you say, well, but Brainerd, what do we do about immigration? Well, that's another story we'll have to cover another time. Basically, it does amount to amnesty. Frankly, Jeb Bush's proposal is pretty good. Peace out.